What's up you guys? It has been a really hot minute. It's been three weeks worth of hot minute. This is actually the longest break I have took from YouTube since I started about a year and one or two months ago now. Everyone thinks traveling is super easy and you're having the best time all the time. And whilst that is mostly true, moving around every three days is fucking knackering. It's expensive, you're constantly on the go, constantly unpacking, packing trying to see the best shit, vlog it all the time, edit it. I am knackered. And I have been knackered for a while now, which has led me to where I am today. So I guess I'm no longer traveling, technically. I'm not moving around all the time. But I am living here in Krabi, Thailand, which is one of my favorite places that I came to right at the start of my travels. I decided to take a little break for a little while. I'd been moving around so quickly making such an effort to tick everything off the bucket list that I would wanted to see in that country. Need to go here, need to go here, need to go here. And I realized about midway through Indonesia that I was just ticking stuff off for the sake of saying I'd been somewhere. I wasn't actually getting up in the morning and going because I wanted to. I was getting up in the morning and doing it because I felt like I had to. And whilst I saw some amazing stuff, I was really, really having a good time. I need to slow down, take a chill pill and do stuff because I want to do it rather than do stuff because I feel like I should do it for the vlog or for my bucket list or for whatever. And the whole time I was feeling so passionate about learning the guitar and I really just wanted to stay somewhere and focus for a while, maybe save a little bit of money. So I'm here in Krabi, Thailand where I now live and I wanted to show you what my new life is like, what I'm doing here, how I spend my days, what my rent is like, etc, etc. So without further ado, let's get cracking. Now in the three weeks that I have been away from YouTube, I've had plenty of time to get settled in my new area of Onang. And this is my apartment building. And this is my beauty, my little Scoopy. Honda Scoopy is probably one of the most common models of bike out here. This baby cost me three and a half thousand baht a month, which is cheaper than renting daily. And it is so convenient to just be able to nip around everywhere all day. I'm literally on this thing for half the day, just doing errands, seeing people, going places, whatever it might be. So it's really, really handy to have a bike. Oh, that's right. This is just my balcony with my balcony furniture. Don't mind me. All right, welcome to my humble abode. It's beautiful. Now it is a little bit of a mess. I was gonna tidy up and put stuff away, but truth be told, I don't have anywhere to put things away. It's semi-unfurnished, so I figure raw and natural state, you get what you're given, that's that. This is how I live here in Thailand. Wardrobe, which is something that I have not had for five months time. Obviously I've been living out of a backpack, stuffing everything in and out every time I wanna get changed or do anything really. So now I can actually unpack and put my stuff somewhere. <sighs> Follow me through to the lounge area. This is where I like to practice guitar. And this is my new guitar that I bought here. It's an electric, acoustic, classic guitar. And it's really, really nice. That cost me 4,000 baht. And it's a drastic improvement on the one that I started with, which has now fallen apart. This is actually just one of the patio stools from outside, but I have literally no other furniture, so I figured I'd treat myself to bringing that in. This is my little office area. This is where I like to do all my editing. If you'll follow me through to the kitchen, Oh, have you noticed lately how much natural light I get in here? Look at all these windows. Fantastic. So this is my... Oh. This is my fridge where I keep nothing but my water. In Bali and the Philippines, I made such a huge deal when hostels didn't have refillable water stations because it meant that I was buying plastic bottles all the time, which is a huge pet peeve of mine. I really, really hate wasting stuff and wasting plastic for no reason, especially when you're in an ocean area and a lot of plastic is gonna end up in the sea. But here in Thailand, in this part anyway, shockingly, there is no way for me to get water apart from buying bold water from 7-Eleven. You cannot possibly physically imagine what it feels like to have a private bathroom and actually any kind of privacy, any kind of private space such as this after having shared hostel rooms of up to... I've had 10, 12, 20, 40 people for six months nearly. The bathroom, kind of like a wet room I'd say. Heated shower, which is a luxury in its own right. I don't have air con though, so most of the time I am having cold showers because it's the only way I can get cool in the daytime. Toilet complete with your Asian essential bum gun. This is probably one of my favorite things about Asia and it's the thing I'm gonna miss most when I actually eventually head back to Europe. The bum gun is a lifesaver and toilet tissue alone is ridiculous. And finally, 
the boudoir. This is where I do my sleeping. I have a double bed all to myself, which is fucking amazing. Have got a fan. So sleeping, I'm okay, but the rest of the time I'm just too hot. So let's talk finances. My rough budget while I was traveling was about a thousand pounds a month and I was blowing through that very, very quickly and I'm watching my funds dwindle and me getting a little bit more scared because in no way, shape or form am I ready to go home. I love life out here in Asia and I don't want to go back to being an adult. It does not suit me at all. So while I was staying in a hostel here in Onang, was about 300 baht per night. Um, I stayed there for two weeks, just while I was chilling and low-key looking for an apartment. But it was getting a little bit on the expensive side long term when you're sharing a room with uh, such a lot of people. So 300 baht a night works out about 9,000 baht a month. This apartment is 6,000 baht a month. Granted, I don't have aircon, but I have all of this space to myself. The bed, the wardrobe, and the fridge were all included. I don't have any living room furniture, but I am looking into getting some. And that does also include Wi-Fi, electric, and water bills, so that's pretty cool. It means that it works out about the same price for me to have a flat to myself and a scooter as it was to stay in a hostel for a month at a time. When you're traveling around all the time, you have so much stuff to do because you're in a new destination every few days, you're meeting new people all the time, you're seeing new things, you're seeing new places. How do I fill my time when I'm staying in the same place? I'll tell you now, I have been in Onang for just shy of a month, actually I guess I guess a month now because I extended my visa the other day. I have not been bored for a single second. Usually my day works a little bit like this. Wake up lazily between 10 and 11 o'clock. Practice guitar for a good two hours before heading out to get some kind of Thai food, usually vegetable fried rice if it's breakfast. Maybe in the afternoon I'll go meet a friend. Usually there'll be someone having a barbecue or someone going to the beach or somewhere to go and something to do. I'm very rarely found without anything to do and if I am, I just go and chill in one of my favorite spots, such as Jungle Bar around the corner, which is a really cool place to go and hang out. A lot of expat people go there and just sit and chill and uh, meet new people and stuff like that. So it's not as though being in a hostel is the only sociable environment. I meet new people every single day. I go to Rayleigh Beach all the time, there's Noctarup Beach, there's Krabby Town, there's Tiger Temple, there's tons of stuff to do in this area. In the evening times, at the minute, I'm currently helping out with a reggae bar around the corner. It's also a great way for me to meet people and have a good time. Now, as much as I would like to continue my Thailand time for as long as possible and continue going to see the places in Asia that I've still got on the bucket list and haven't been able to go to yet, my funds are going to run out soon. How am I going to sustain myself? Well, I met a few people here last week who teach English online. Teaching English in Asia is a very common thing, but I hadn't met anyone who was doing it online before. It's very popular with Chinese students, as there's a huge demand to learn English over there, and it's cheaper for them to learn online, and also easier and more convenient. So I haven't started doing it yet. It's something that I'm in the process of applying for, and hopefully it will be starting in the next couple of weeks. But all I know so far is I can do it from the comfort of my own home, I can earn up to 20 to $30 an hour, and I only have to commit to, I think, four hours a day, which is a lot less than I'd be working if I was working back in the UK to try and save money. So that's a general overview of my life here in Onang. If you did like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you want to know anything more about my life down below in the comments. Follow my other social media, which is in the description box, and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.